Well, down here on the River Wye, going to give it a go. I stayed at B&B &B overnight because I was out yesterday afternoon and had a... Well, I'm not going to say what I caught yesterday afternoon. But obviously I stayed in the B&B &B overnight. It's well worth paying a B&B money just to get a chance for a couple of extra hours fishing. So I'm down. Down on the River Wye. Hereford and District Angling Association. A day to get water, not some secret squirrel private thing. It's day to get water as I speak in October 2022. Um, the river's very low. If you've had a drought. There isn't a little bit then gone down because I looked on the river gauge. Um, and you can tell by the river gauge is sometimes it's coming up or going down. Best thing to do is contact Woody in Woody's Angling. Send to the tackle shop, local Hereford tackle shop. He gives you gem information and he'll tell you whether you're going to waste your time or not. You can't put fish on the hook, of course you can't, but he can point you in the right direction. So, I'm figuring that the pace here, I'm going by what uh, Peter used to tell me, Peter Arlott on the Kennet, watch for the leaves in the autumn and, and cast where the main flow of leaves are going to get the best pace for the barbel. Now he was a specialist in rolling meat for barbel. Um, so I'm going to give it a go, I'm going to try rolling meat, but first I'm going to feed up, put some ground bait balls out there, so literally only just turned up. I don't do early doors, it must be about, I don't know, getting on for 10 o'clock. Half past nine maybe. Got some big pellets in there. Bailey's horse feed, usual stuff, bit of bran, mush it up. Put some stones in the ground bait, pound it with about six. Tackle up, big jumbo feeders that I've made from uh, garden fencing wire. And uh, see where we go from there. Most important thing is, A, don't get your feet wet. And B, don't over wet your ground bait just get enough in there to damp it and this old Bailey's sometimes is best left to sit for a little bit I've got some in there from yesterday it's damp at the bottom so that's why I'll be very careful I don't overcook it and get it too wet because it's a very very long walk back to the car if I want to get more ground bait best just to scoop it in like this mix it all around you can put what you want in there sweet corn maggots casters chopped worm the world is your oyster. This is just what I use. Totally unsponsored. I just go up the agricultural feed centre, buy a sack of Baileys, buy a sack of bran, trout pellets. Yes, look, that's 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 just about. I might have a tad too much bran in there, but it'll be alright. I'm gonna let it set. You see, let's let it set for a minute. And generally, there's some minnows out there. for good luck. Right, let's get rigged up. It's getting colder. Look, I had to get through the jungle with my barrow. It's just a nightmare getting through down to this swim. On the footpath, really overgrown. Nice pace there though. Wind behind me, we're going to have to put the brolly up here. I don't know what it's going to be like for wind. This keeps falling to pieces. It needs to be shorter. It's been a godsend, this barrow. It's been abused. Mike should never have given it to me. Well, he didn't give it to me. I basically stole it. Okay, do I want to jump here yet? I think I do. The old chair, actually, has totally got shafted, so I've got it held together with a bungee now, so it's, look, you can tell, it's all splintered and bashed. I've had a go at it with the forceps. So it's just about going to hold me together today, I hope. If I'm rolling meat, I've got to wade it, it doesn't matter. But these are what I make up. These are the giant feeders. You can go and buy these in Woody's shop. I've also made a comb feeder that will roll around um, out of garden fence wire. And hopefully it rolls like this, goes around. And also when I wind in, it comes up. Whereas these, the jumbo ones, can you know sit behind a rock like that. Can work to your advantage for sort of bolt rigging, as it were, when it sort of lightly snags up, but only on stones this size, not on big rocks out there. I'm going to be starting fishing with these uh, jumbo ones first. So, ground bait, I've got one rigged up. That ground bait should have soaked up now. I come about that angle there. So, give it a good old mix up. I'm going to put about six balls in straight away. Now, what I do is get a stone in there, push a stone in. And that'll take it straight down to the bottom, hopefully, where you've uh, thrown it. 
if it breaks up obviously the river is gone and it may well carry the fish down stream away from it the stone I feel we used to use it on Amps Raven all the time when the maggot era was there in the late 60s that's the 1960s not the 1860s well it feels like the 1860s sometimes especially this morning oh I've got no strength to squeeze these hard enough if you don't squeeze them hard they'll break up on impact which is fine if you're float fishing and you're running a float down that you probably want that if you're feeder fishing this basically is like putting if I put five of these in that would be like putting ten feeder falls in I feel this is like a double feeder field of ground bait you can also leave that to air dry a little bit and then they they won't you know break up so much on impacts so I want to throw them out quite well spread them around a bit that's a good one and then I'll follow up with a feeder I say as the ground bait ball breaks up, it will catch on those stones and leave a sort of trail of crumbs in there which the uh, tiny minnows and stuff will eat. Right, let's get rigged up on the rod situation. I'm tempted to use this barrow actually. <coughs> Could work in my favour. Yes indeedy, you're going to like this, look I've actually got tubes I can jam those into like this, I can go through there and jam them in like this for fishing, but I want them this way, I want that angle. Like that, c'est le voila. I was here yesterday afternoon and uh, I don't I don't know if it's come up a tad. Now I'm gonna use bite indicators because when I'm filming as I always say I'm looking away. Very easy to lose a rod with barbel. They just give me a little bit of advanced warning warning if I get a crash tape. Right, let's get one out there. Here's the jumbo feeder. One of our shows I uh, showed how I made them. Just garden fencing wire for seem to be the right diameter. And they do actually take a kachunking big piece of ground bait. I might have made that a little bit too damn it. I might be setting up a bit. So, as the saying goes, as the actress said to the bishop, here we go, wish me luck. <laughs> and we go. That might be a bit too far over. A lot of pace there. Now just give me a second or two to grab the rod. just there and what I normally do is just put either a spike in there or my ground bait bucket right let's get the other one rigged up Smith watch that rod top so this backdrop is actually quite good I think for showing you and I've got the wind off my back here now this is my rig the feeders just sliding up and down there okay and it stops I can show you on a bit of nylon sleeve in there you can use valve rubber I just got that some people push it over like that on the swivel it's to stop that swivel jamming in that which it won't because they're both different size swivels I don't use a shot to stop that which I would do say in still waters because there's so much weight in this feeder the shot's going to slip all the time it's closer and closer you'll lose your length which is about three just about three feet to the pellet the banded pellet there um, so that's why I stopped using shot. I don't like those little nylon pinchy things. I've tried those. They slip as well. This way, another um, swivel there, it, it's locked solid. 
and of course I can change hook lengths if I want to sure I so wish so that's my rig there but if you do what happens is that slips and slips and slips with a split shot there to stop it right and what you end up doing is you bite it tighter and tighter and tighter and all that does is weaken the line then you get a fish pop and lose it it's just not worth it I don't feel for the sake of a you know small swivel I always clear my rod top there you notice that what I do is look if it feels tight when I do that I swing it back point at the feeder the lead whatever just to give it a few shakes to get it you do not want with a quiver tip to be casting a big feeder like this with um, the weight around your tip around there up that tip because it might snap I'm not saying it will it might no bites on that I don't think I'm going to get many chub in this swim I have that feeling um, if I don't get anything on the feeder doing this I'm going to start rolling meat all along there because that ground but I aim to feed the swim up first there like I did yesterday afternoon now that's the second film I did really good luckily and just in an afternoon a nightmare traffic it took me three hours to get up here everything that go, could go wrong went wrong I got detoured over half of Wales that Ross place they just seem to have roads all the time road works so I'm going to follow the leaves down but I'm going to give it a good hour trying to feed the swim up with these jumbo feeders that's why I've got like almost half a bucket of ground bait and pellets because I know I will get through it. Another thing I've noticed up here, a lot of bar and I've done loads and loads of barbel fishing. We all know about the witching hour, that last bit of dusk. I've never done a lot of good up here on the white dusk. I really, honestly really haven't. Those big feeders can go, look that one went farther than I wanted to go. Drag. I don't want another bag for that, aren't I? Nobody's using this. The bloke doesn't even know I've got it. Just lightly on the butt. So as the rod pulls down, the butt doesn't go flying up, which does happen with me several times a year. landing that where on the first of the session needs to be dipped twice shaken and laid just on a slight incline it's got to go slightly inclining towards the fish inviting the fish towards it I guess not many people would use their barrow for this but I think you'll find that that works admirably I'm sitting right next to it they're not going to slip and fall all over the place and you can see the rod tops there easily against that dark look 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 look, look. That, was a, that was a fish that was the one i didn't expect to get a take on could be a line bite that one oh. i don't actually mind seeing those because this is a, you know it shows you this fish moving in the swim got my waders over there so i can go wading if I do want to roll some meat around there, but I'm going to tough it out with the feeder first. I think I'll get the volley up, it's pretty windy. Well guys, I just sort my umbrella and the rod's gone right round. I don't think it's a chub, I think it's a barber. I'm hoping he's not got my other line. I'm hoping... Oh, he's taking me out. I'm hoping I've missed that line there. I'm going to keep him moving. Oh yeah, it's a barbell. I can feel him rubbing on something. I think he's out. Wow, he's cranking downstream. Let's get that net. That was on a bigger pellet. I've got the drag backed up on the other rod. Look at that bending in the rock, boys. He's still going downstream. I can only get to there. I won't get back up there to get my waders. Oh, heart's pounding now. The old cardio's on the go. Thank goodness. Yeah, that was on the upstream feeder, I'm surprised. Come on. 
I just don't want to give up. Again, I would never have noticed that, only hearing a splash of the rod going in, if I hadn't got that bright indicator on. This is either a good fish, or I've turned into a nabby pamby fisherman. I just realised, I think I put the wrong reel on, I've got float, a float rod. A float reel on there. Don't tell the barbel. Definitely a barbel. There he is. Now he's going upstream. You see, if you can get level with him, you can sort of kite them upstream. Oh, it's a nice fish. Nice fish. He's off again. Whack a do, what a scrap. He's pulling me out downstream, look. Don't be afraid to walk back steadily. Look, I'm gaining yards doing that. And then one down the slack. A little bit of weed there, I don't want him in the weed. There's my Godzilla feeder hanging in the... Uh, in the air. Come on baby. Oh that's a nice fish, holy schmoly. That is a nice fish. Man for your first barbel, look at that one. Oh my god. Come and meet my friend Matt. Look at that one. Where's the feeder? Just on the edge. Size 10 hook. <laughs> what a result. Look at this fish. That ain't a small barbel, people. There's the rod and reel. You guys, judge for yourself. Just a change in the. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Totally awesome. Look at the tail on it. What a fish. That is a beaut. Wowie. What a fish for a first fish. Let's get it back. As they say in the States, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, get in. Well, that didn't take long, guys. 15 minutes. I'm wondering if I've got enough pellets left. No, I'm not worried. Obviously, I've got uh, lunch and meat. And yesterday afternoon, late afternoon, I caught here on rolled lunch and meat. Stupid, stupid, stupid. I can't even get the second one out, guys. The first one just got folded over. I did say you wouldn't get chubbing this with. I've got another barbel. Oh my god. Hope those guys are still walking. I mean, I've got the whole of the downstream end to fish yet. I've only started the top end. So the last thing I want is somebody dropping in about five feet down below me. I was told years ago by a very famous barbel, Avon angler, called Jack Harrigan, late 60s. Shows you how long I've been barbel fishing. And he's very, very good at it. And he used to say, he always told me, you can pull a fish upstream from an angler, but you can't bring them downstream. This is barbel, he was just barbel fishing. And I've always remembered that. So good tip, Jack. So I was starting at the top, bringing the idea that I pull fish up. I mean, that's for match fishermen. They might know that in a river you can pull fish up, but you can't make them turn around and pull down because the food's coming from the upstream end. I so hard I could uh, I could do consultancy talking couldn't I while I'm playing the fish and on traditional Avon rods six pound line none of that carpy stuff with 18 pound line and a three pound test curve rod but something you get a bit of sport with the fish 
can't believe that's four. Okay, so the story is, I fished downstream, did really well yesterday afternoon. I came up here just with waders, net, map. I nailed three bigger barbel in this area. I've come back this morning. That's why I thought I'm gonna have a B&B &B and come back this morning. I've just got a gut feeling, the pace, the flow, everything's pointing in the right direction. And I think I've possibly proven that was a wise move. It's not even half past 10 and I'm on number four. I only started just after nine. Arthritis wrists are going to play up tonight on the drive home. Goodness me, there must be some fish out there. Because this time of year they do feed up for the winter, that is known, but I mean, why there's not more anglers down here? I don't know. In a minute, guys, I'm going to go to head camp. There's the fish. I'm going to say that fish is at least six to seven. Uh, could be in trouble, guys, because my one of the GoPros, I must have caught that many fish yesterday, and I'm not even going to go near it really looking at it, is uh, saying card full. It won't have it. I charged all the batteries up in the B&B &B last night, but that's not good. So I've got whatever I've got on this. I think I've got double cards in there, but I don't ever remember running into a double card situation whereby it goes from A to B. I don't know if it does it automatically, or do I take out A, put it in B, and put B in A as a fresh card. So we just play it as it uh, is. And I've got a second GoPro, but it's only got 50% battery and I haven't got the charger. As usual, it's a hip shooter production by Graham Pullen. Gone a bit quiet. I see the other guys walk all the way back again, and he's sort of <laughs> wanting to fish here really badly, or as close to me as he can get, I guess. Don't blame him, I mean, this is a nice big open beach area, it's comfortable to fish. Bit of a nightmare coming through the uh, walkway, as it were. Now it's gone quiet now. Now this is what happened yesterday, but it was much later in the day. And the wind's coming up. Raining, I'm hiding under here. I've got the camera here. I do a bit of shooting from in here. You see, looking down the river there, it's very, very fishy, not a lot of leaves coming down. There's a few coming down now. Well, hopefully I've beaten the uh, leaf situation. I mean, they, they say, oh, it needs a good flood, needs to really come up. Well, I don't know, I'm just catching fish. What can I say? I don't, I don't get it. I really don't get it, I'm just fishing. I mean, is it a fact that, like a lot of anglers, and I've done the same, you wait for the perfect conditions and the perfect conditions don't exist, they don't come. What you think of the perfect conditions, by the time they come, the weather's changed, you know? As is what I talk about changing conditions, look, huge gusts of wind come and already here the leaves are pouring down and just tweaking on the line, giving you false line bites. So it shows you the weather is on the change. I think I've got it just right, just getting in there before the bad weather comes. I think in 48 hours we're going to get a load of rain up here. Where I'm sitting now will probably be underwater. It comes off the Welsh mountains apparently and rises. I've never been here when it's done that, but that's how it comes up. So I have to watch my barrow down here and see if the tide is coming in. That's just this nasty weather, a little bit squally weather that's come through. But of course the edge of those leaves tells me that's where the flow is for the barbel. Come on boys, fold over. I did a fresh bait up guys and I've got a fish on but it feels like a chub this time. I'm trying to play it under the umbrella. This is horribly drizzly out there. And the net's out there as well. Chublet. Who's that a trout? That's a chub. There we go. Nice little chub, just when I didn't think there'd be any chub out there. So it's four barbel and one chub. 
Get through the ground, mate. Right, send another parcel out there. It'd be nice if this uh, drizzly, grizzly rain stops. As you can see, I use these uh, trout pellets here. I don't know what size they are. are they 8 mils? Are they 10 mils? They're quite a biggish sort of size. But that's the size um, that I tend to like using. The ground bait, as you can see, once it's uh, taken a bit of water and soaked, it does actually bind up quite well. And you can put your stone in it like I did earlier. And then I just couple that to a buzzer or bite indicator just in case. Where you get filming guys trying to do arty stuff <laughs> oh dear I'm gonna have to switch this off because this camera's too big to hold and play a fish the rain stopped and another fine river wide barbel bites GP's net look at that what we call an iconic species. Wowie, what a session. One again.
I haven't even changed to uh, anything other than pellet feeder at the moment. I'm just going to go on lunch of meat because I do enjoy rolling lunch of meat around. You know, it's more in contact with the fish, but you cannot say this method is productive. It's not productive, I mean, it's just phenomenal. I think a lot of it's got to do with the jumbo size of my Godzilla feeders. As he comes, it's lovely in the water. Look at the size of these fish, people. I mean, they're probably an average of five, six pounds. Now, another reason I could be getting these fish, I mean, seven barbed like that. I've noticed there's a shadow line over there. And if you take a look, all those barbed have been hooking and be in that shadow line. Now, as the sun comes around and goes in the west behind me, there's more and more sun coming out on there. I've got a feeling it's gonna go dead in the afternoon in about barely an hour. Now, do I cast further and further over to get that shadow line? I risk snagging up. I feel there's more snags on that side. So I'm just trying to think. It might be an early doors type of fishing situation here. That's why I pulled up six barbels straight out the, straight off the bat. And then as that sun comes around, I'll show you. You might be able to see there as that sun comes onto that. It's coming up here. The sun going up. Well, obviously it goes up. Grab always goes up. Then it goes down. You know what I'm saying? It's coming round here, that's going to light that up more. I've got a feeling it might be right twitchy. Maybe that's when I should try rolling meat. And down there more higher trees. So maybe there's more shade down there, I don't know. Answers on a postcard. I'm always thinking, you know that guys, always. After all these years, God Almighty, I've caught thousands of barbel over the years. But I'm still thinking. You still think you know it. And do you know what? You don't really. A few tentative bangs here. I don't know whether they're lion bites or whether they're small chub. I might try a big piece of lunch of meat out there behind the feeder, but I need a bigger hook, about a size six. I'll put a size six grips hook on, big cube of lunch of meat, and see what happens there. It's blowing up quite a bit. I've got to hold on to the brolly. Nearly lost it once. I lost it yesterday afternoon and went in the river. Luckily, <laughs> luckily I have waders on, I could go and get it. The thing is, if these fish have dropped back, I've got a feeling they might have done, because I'm casting farther and farther down. The feed's down there, if they're getting a bit spooky and twitchy now, so I've had seven of them, I figure I can roll a piece of meat to them. I can go out of waders and roll a meat. I can go right down there. They could be right down there for all I know. It's sort of ideal for float fishing, but I just have a feeling I could roll a piece of meat through there. The weather's changed again. Sun and blue sky, had rain to start with as you saw, sun and blue sky, now much more wind and nasty looking clouds. Grain boat's holding up, I'm going to pile it in and then when that's gone then I am on lunch of meat, that is all there is. News update, people. I had another small chub, pound and a bit, I suppose. Too small chub. Uh, very, very quiet. I've gone on uh, big cubes of lunch of meat, about static behind the feeder. Nothing. It's like turning a tap off. Who would have thought you'd get seven barbel bang on the trot like that, and then it goes dead? I am wondering if they've dropped back downstream, got, you know, spooky. There's only so many you can catch, obviously. And I'm wondering, if I get my waders on, I might try rolling meat further back down there, because that all looks good area. I don't see it shallowing up over there, so it might be worth a, a go. So I'll wind one of these in, might have a sandwich. Um, no, the way to do this, Graham, is leave these two out while I have a sandwich, and then uh, change over and put the waders on. So you can see, even though the fishing started off really lightning fast, it's changed already. Now I got a, well, I'm thinking I've got to change as well. I'm not sure if the river hasn't even dropped from there, you know. 
Right guys, I've got my rubbers on. I changed the rig, took the swim feeder off, got a single hook and a treble A shot about 15 inches from the hook. Cubed up some luncheon meat. I've got my wading pouch here. Gonna go out now and uh, just roll a piece of meat around because I've got to pick up some more fish. It's pretty dark behind me. Coming in over there, I feel some rain, so I'm just gonna move out here and uh, Sometimes, you know, it could be they're just laying somewhere, they just drop back and they're laying somewhere. And uh, a piece of meat roll past and might just, just get a take. Just might pick up that extra fish. Big piece of meat, big hook. Just leave the point just exposed like that. And then lob it out, check my drag. Wow, it's on catfish drag and then just roll it around and see what happens. I can't use a cat, which I could really do with, um, because I've got the camera obviously on my head, and I sort of really need to see where the line enters the water, so I know when to drop it back like this to let some, oh, that was a bite there, boys. That was a bite, that could have been a chub. Maybe this could make pick a, an extra fish up. Strange how it just shuts off. And that's fishing. I don't want to go too far out there, if that makes sense. Now I've got it on this finger here and also there. And as it goes down, I'm dropping back slack to, so it doesn't swing up in the current too fast and look sort of unnatural. I want it bouncing along the bottom if I can. And it's just hung up there. I can see by the, the lines not moving around. So I just tweak it gently, take up the slack. I'm waiting for a take all the time. I'm fancying over near that bush. All right. Lead me to it while I work away here. The wind's going to be annoying. And that rain cloud. Come on fish, you started off so well. That's the main push of waters. Not coming on the inside, see the dead leaves here? I want to be over that far side, maybe a bit further across. Right, I had to come back in for the head cam guys. I can fish better with my cap on. I've got right over the far side of that where the leaves are and I think I've got a chub hooked up. Yeah, nice chub. That's chub of the day, I think, that one. Yes. Here we go. Look at that. That was worth changing the rolling meat. He thinks so as well. Lovely jubbly. So, I'm going to fish with my cap on, and I'm only going to put the camera on when I hook up. I'm in again, people. I think it's another chub, but it's way down the bottom of the swing. So I'm amazed, the number of chub that's in here, that there's no pike that come and eat them off the hook, to be honest. In fact, I've never, in all the years I've come here, ever had a fish taken by a pike in this stretch of the Y. I had pike here when I've been pike fishing, but I've never had one. There we go. I've never had one, uh, Come up and grab it. Doesn't that have a nice chub, look? Right. Happy days. Right. Right, down the back, as I thought. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I think, I think I've got barbel number eight, I think. I don't see this being a chub. Out of a chub if it is. 
he's now coming up in the current here. I haven't got much left on this camera, uh, battery wise. So I'm hoping this is a barbell, and it is indeed. Yes, sir. -y. Tells its own story. Well, that's rolling meat. Oh. Just had the feeling they they might have dropped back. If I've been hammering them, even the feed there might have dropped back on the feed there. Those coming out of the actual swim feeder. Come on, let's get in the back. Hey, it's a nice fish too. Now I don't need to land in there here because it's what we call fishing to hand. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Wow. Now you can fish with backwinder, you can fish on the drag like I am and rim control with your finger as addition. For safety, there he is. Oh, he doesn't like the colour of my waders. What a setting, eh? Shame I found the river wire too late. Spent too much time scouting nothing out the Hampshire Raven. Good in the 60s. Not for me now. There he is. Look at that. A prime barbel. Number eight. Back you go, buddy. There he goes. Wow. Right, that was worth taking a head cam off. I can see the bow and the line, so I'm going to try down the bottom end of the swim this time. The waiting is picking me up the fish. I've had another small one, and I've got a small one here. This is number 10. Big piece of meat he took, this one. Smaller barbel guys, but they all count. Ten barbel. I've only had one sandwich. Come with me, people. Come with me. <laughs> Next cast down. Next rolled meat down. That's ridiculous. To be honest, I think I possibly wasn't uh, fishing with big enough pieces of luncheon meat. I'm not so stupid. As soon as I put bigger pieces of luncheon meat on, I've got the wax. Bam, straight on it. Not small fish, people. Not small fish at all. Oh, this guy's been lost. I can do him a favour. He's been hooked just there in the nose. With a barbed hook, that's not very nice, is it? 
It's like a barbed hook. Well, we freed him of that. It's a tiny matchman's type hook. That is. That's a tiny barbed hook, which is not allowed. So I've done him a favour. If he says barbed, it's barbed. If he says barbless, it's barbless. If he says micro barb, it's micro barb. It's not rocket science. More lunch of meat. The well, hooks that I'm using is that, it's a 10. Barbless, called a grips, grips hooks. A straight point. Now, I sort of like wide gapes, so I've got fishing line in my mouth ready to tie that hook on. But these are very strong wire. I've got a sharper hook, I feel, but it's just, you know, it might open up on a barbel, I don't know. So I'd use one of these grips, which I know are strong wire. Look, that's what I'm using, to get it out there. Lost a few hooks in the bottom, to be honest. Got the feeders back, but the uh, the hooks got um, snagged up in a rock. Got any of that, but it wasn't out there five minutes. Just take it. I don't know if you guys got any of that, but it wasn't out there five minutes. It's another good barbel. It was a real, real strange tape. Well, you guys must have saw it. I don't even think I was watching again. That's why I've got the bright indicator on there. As you can say, I'm messing around with the camera up here, it's trying to set it up to get a shot looking back. Next thing I know, where we go. I mean, I'm so pleased I made those big feeders up. I made them up about three years ago when I got fed up feeding good feeders to the rocks. I thought well, I might as well get something that's cheap and expendable. By golly, do they work. I know they've got the urge to help and fight, I know that, but they are still an incredibly strong fish. And I've, I've heard from so many people this season that it's really rubbish, it's not fishing, the barbell of all gone. Uh, I haven't even mentioned anybody what I caught yesterday afternoon, which is why I stayed in the B&B &B overnight, shelled out the 50 crisp ones, I thought I'm going to stay for another go at that. I can only get what I get filled with alone. That all he goes, six pounds. I've seen some of them got different marks and that on the bottom. Hopefully it's not some sort of pollution mark. But they're just this time of year, well every time of year. They're a beautiful gold colour. Look at that gold on the cheek. That's what you used to 
He used to be a guy years ago for the old angling magazine. Most of you guys won't know. He took some really good stills. What was his name? John Cooper. I can't remember. He took beautiful close-ups. Let's get this guy back. Another one hooked up, he's got me hung up somewhere, so I'm going to slack him off. What I normally used to do is not stream of weed, it'll be a boulder or something. Try to come downstream. So guys are lucky we've got downstream and we've managed to get him out there so I don't want him going back in. Oh, yeah. Any good mate? Uh, yes got one yeah. Well I haven't got it yet but it's there. So if I only keep the fish generally you can get them out downstream but there's not much stream of weed in there because they've had the problems with the water. The big problem is uh, boulders and stuff that the feed will hang up in. Let's go downstream this one. There he comes. Guys, I'm going to bring this off because I'm running out of battery from yesterday and we'll get it on the map. Got him in, guys. Another sort of six ish. And some guys just went past Cut of Anglers and I heard them saying, Well, we know where to come tomorrow. I mean, I won't be here tomorrow, so it doesn't matter. Let's get him back. So unfortunately, it might have popped out when the gentleman went past those two guys. Oh, he's only good, and I said, just the one. Now listen, if I told them what I caught yesterday, and I said, look, I've had three in about five casts, don't ever expect to find this swim tomorrow, will you? You know, I, it's not a question of ultimate secrecy. It's not secrecy, because I'm going to put a film up. But if I was fishing tomorrow, I'd shot myself in the foot. Just the way it is, I'm sure a lot of you guys out there, I fully respect that. that if you have good fishing and you want to keep it yourself, I do not blame you. It all seems to have died on me for the moment, guys. I've got a long drive home. I think I'm going to call it, but I'm in 11 barbel. I must have had six chub as well. I've waded way upstream, tried rolling meat. Now it seems to have shut down big time. So fantastic fishing. Um, but there's just, it's sort of what happened yesterday. It did get to uh, good fishing and then in the afternoon, late afternoon, it just seemed to shut down. So I'm going to pack all my gear away, but I'm going to go right down by the car park and see if I can't grab one hour there and just see if I can't pick an extra barbel up, whatever size. I don't get any chub, but that way I've done the worst of the walking through the uh, all the woods and God knows what else there because I have to lift this trolley over fallen trees and stuff, so it takes me a while. So great fishing. Um, please, you could tag along with us. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, fingers crossed I'll do my sign off down the other end <laughs> with another fish. So we'll have a go rolling the meat for a while, but I figure last half hour, double feeders, uh, pellet, and I might might pick something up. Be nice to close out with one. At least I've done the worst of the journey. Also, when you see the inside of the curve here, there's not much current, but on the outside here is deep and fast. There's a lot of rubbish comes down. So you're going to get snagged with the leaves in the autumn more. If I had 
a preference. I would be fishing on the inside, casting over this way rather than off here, but basically I'm just killing time. Not the greatest setup, but it's going to do. I'm getting bites on tiny pieces of lunch meat and a size 10. Oh, here we go. Something different, guys. <laughs> Big eel. Well, not very good. Big enough to break that. There we go, guys. Wriggling eel to finish off with. And like most fishermen know, he's probably throated the hook. My well, guys, sun's going down now. Not long before sunset, I've got a long drive. I want to go and grab a burger on the way home. So thank you for watching the totally awesome fishing show. I've had an absolute blast on those barbel. Um, died off though, you know, but listen, catch them while they're there. We'll see you in the next show. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button. TA Fishing, TA Outdoors. I'll tell you what, I'll be dead happy if I catch as many fish as that in the next film. My friends the swans have come all the way up here for me, so that's packing up time. Swans and eels packing up time. Okay, so what I'm going to be making my swim feeders out of, need to tidy up in here badly, is this stuff. I've done it before. I think we've got a film. Up. I've got to knock a few up anyway, but I have got a film up on these. I'll just run briefly through them. Anybody wants to make them? Look, this is the way I make my homemade feeders that catch fish. End of. That's all there is. I don't sell them. I'm not marketing them, but I'll let you know what it is. It's this square stuff. See it? There. Hopefully you can see it. It's just about the right size as the squares off a of feeders. This company, and I'm not plugging, I'm just telling you so you know where to get it. Shore Fence is fencing. Galvanised handy mesh panel. It is handy. This is 610mm by 910mm. That's the sheet size. And it's 6mm square holes. Lo and behold, a feeder and a feeder it's pretty much six mil square holes will do me. So all I do is I get a feeder, and I any old feeder will do, whatever you've, uh, probably not, don't lose all your feeders because you need one for a template to make this. And what I do is I get, I unroll it, get my feeder width, which in this case is, is, is there, I'm gonna say two and a quarter inches across. I leave the little tag ends up, you can see the little tag ends because that's gonna tuck in the other side. I then get my feeder, I roll it in the shape I want. Well, I've already got some. I've just, I've just, I've just made one now. You can make them whatever diameter you want. Let's say I want that diameter. It's just a simple case of getting the diameter you want there and the length you want, you see. Putting it on the mesh. I'm gonna roll it up this way. But first, what I'm gonna do, if you can see that, I'm hoping you can, you're always sort of left with a spiky end so I'm going to snip those off to give me a nice even uh, edge, or as, as even as it's going to get. Now you can use cutters and go snip, 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 snip. Or you can use a pair of old scissors, which are my workshop scissors, which do look pretty much the same thing and a lot quicker. I've tried tin snips. The tin snips, you know, they did work, but it, sometimes it will buckle the edge. I want a clean edge there if I can. So you'll get a clean edge, one cut down, but because you've got, look, a clean edge there, the next cut on the sheet is gonna leave you those. You can either bend them over or you can snip them off. I'm just gonna run the scissors down that edge and I'll put it so that they just ping there. They pretty well shoot all over the place. I don't mind, it's my workshop. I clean it up every once every 10 or 12 years. Cut it down, 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 down. I might as well do one long strip in one go. And then pop, 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 there you go. Then you've got to clear them up, okay? I can clear them up. 
with one of these, a leftover magnet. Buzz, buzz, boom, 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 just all over there. Lo and behold, there, guys, are all the little, or majority of the little snipped off tag ends. It's all good fun, this. So I've got my template, which would be an original plastic feeder. In this case, it's, as you see in the cookery programs, it's one I've rolled earlier. Now, does that sound right if I'm rolling something? You guys know what I mean. I roll around, keep my fingers right there. Now, because this end's got the tag, I can cut this one flush, just like this. And luckily, here's my tag end, the next piece I want to make already has the tags there. Then all I do is just get a sort of rolled shape roughly, just like this. I just overlap them into those holes. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that there? See, I've overlapped them like that. Just get my nail, just push, be careful. You don't spike your finger, all health and safety boards, whatever, you know. Oh, glasses, gloves, clean underpants, all that stuff, yeah. Whatever. My workshop, my swim feeder, my fingers. And then, get my good crushing down like this. I'm not really worried if I don't have a perfect circle swim feeder like that. I don't mind if they're actually slightly elliptical because of the weight, the lead weight goes here, it will sit flat on the sea, on the seabed? And you'll have uses on the sea, on the riverbed better. So I'm just going to finish getting these tag, tag ends rolled over. So basically I've got a swim feeder, got the shape made. Look, there's, there's three there. Take minutes to knock out, different diameters, you know, there. And I'll just cut my lead strips. I'm not going to knock a few more of these out. And then I'll put the lead strips on. Okay guys, you can see I've got three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven feeders ready to be weighted. I just go around with a magnet. Bang, 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 bang. Quite satisfying this actually, to be honest. It's like magic. It's just like magic, waving the magnet all over this. Look. Pick all my little bits and pieces up. Pick everything up. That's it, I think I've got the lot. Obviously I can check it later on. And there they all are. Now I'm going to put the weight on, whatever size weight you want, in strips. I'll cut that up with tin snips. I'm just going to unroll my bits of weight here. So you want it to make sure that it overlaps and tucks inside there. It's just the way I do it. I cut corner each on there. Each on there now. Where I've got the join here, I'm obviously going to go over the top of that, but put a little bit of a circular dish in it if you like, because I'm trying to put flat onto circular, and that's never good. Okay, so that will go across there, equal distance sticking out either end. I fold it around, get one around there. Sometimes you can get better off angles with a like these long nose pliers, just get the general sort of shape. Don't pinch your fingers, people. I know, yes, yes, I know I've done it. Yes, of course I have, that's why I said it. Give that a tap down. So it's tight and snug on the base of the feeder. And I'll just put an extra little curve in it like that, so you can see that's, that's held over there. And I'm going to put a bit of stiff line here. I don't use thin line, I use it nice and stiff. I just use a piece of this leftover 50 pound line from shark fishing. I tie a knot in one end. Dead basic. Dead basic. Well, would it be any other totally awesome way? I then tie a slip knot in there with the knot down in up against the other one, okay? That's going to go over there. You can go through the cage if you wanted to. You know, if you feel better, you can go through the cage. I'll try and put the knot in about the middle there, just snip that extra piece of this out of the way and just fold the lead then just fold the end of that around the top. You need a good quarter of an inch or so 
so that you don't obviously have that opening up when you cast crush it down don't crush your nylon if you can help it Not really vital put a little tweak in the corners then I've got enough there to tie a swivel on here I'm going to be using these sea fishing as well guys I have used some sea fishing so it's up to you whether you want to tie the feeder look down tight like that or whether you want to leave a sort of bit of, of a bit of a link off it's entirely up to you so I'm going to give it what is that about an, I'm going to say an inch one two three four through the hole a little bit of spit then just pull the feeder as for the swivel and the knot together like this it's fiddly to do because I've got the camera there obviously normally you just knock these out as fast as you want all you do snip the tap snip then all you do is just snip that tag end off and there folks it's my swim feeder that I consider expendable I can put two wraps on there if I make it heavier but that should be enough with the ground bait in there it's going to be quite a lump to cast on my rods so now I'm going to finish knocking these up and then the next thing is as we say just add water <laughs> 